This actually came from a, from a story that uh, I tell about my wife, because she's a prolific packer, and uh, we went to the Outer Banks a couple of years ago, and so we loaded up our car with lots of water and food and all kinds of things that we needed because we rented a house with some friends. And uh, as soon as we got there, I had to lug the case of water up three flights of stairs. She said, throw it in the freezer so we can have some cold water in half hour, 45 minutes. Right? Well, by the time you get going, you end up unpacking and all that. It's like a couple hours later. So she finally remembered that the, all, the, all the bottled water was in the freezer. So I went to the freezer in the kitchen, and I grabbed a bottle of water out of the freezer, and it was still liquid. And I thought, man, that should be frozen by now. And as soon as I picked it up and gave it a little squeeze, it instantly slushed, turned to slush. And I thought, what the heck is that? And it turns out that's a, that's a principle called supercooling, where a substance can actually cool below its freezing point. And water is one of the most difficult substances to do that with. So in this, uh, in this container that I have here, I have some seltzer water, which is just water and carbon dioxide dissolved in it. So I have a little bit of solute. And if we can take a look at the temperature, let's see where we're at here. Good. I can't see what it's reading. That's all right. OK. Um, so I told my students about this story. And they go, so what'd you do? I said, well, I had to learn what was going on. And they go, why would you want to do that? Why would you even care? And I said, well, not only that, I said, but I, I think I have a nice demonstration to show, to give you an example of this super cooling. All right. And so uh, that's what I did. So basically. We'll try one here. Okay, so here's the seltzer water. Can you get a good shot of that? All right. And I'm just going to hold it. Oh. Ah, there we go. Excellent. Hope you can see that. Okay, and that's nice and slow. Okay. Actually I actually have four in here. They're kind of hidden in here. And I want to try something uh, new with the last one, which is cardinal sin in demonstration. You never try something you haven't done before in front of a group of people. Oh, that one's going a lot faster. Okay, go one more. See that? Okay. Okay, and what I'm going to do with the last one is I'm going to open it and turn it upside down. Not bad. I lost a little, but not too much. Oops. Okay. All right, there you have super cooling. So, what's really happening there? Well, in the bottle, the bottles are, the glass bottles are very, very smooth on the inside. And for the carbon dioxide gas that's in the, in the soda or in the seltzer water, it has to have what's called a nucleation site. And so if there aren't any dust particles in the water, and you hope you're not drinking dirty water, or if there, there's no scratches or uh, any kind of rough edges on the inside of the bottle, then it's possible for you to supercool uh, quite a few things, actually. And my, my students even talked to me about putting, uh, you know, heating their hot cocoa, their cocoa mix. They put the water in the microwave, and they don't pay attention to how long they set it. And then as soon as they put the spoon in the, in the uh, cup, when they bring the thing out, the thing super boils. So it, so it actually goes, the water actually flashes to steam. And so I tell them, look, you've got to be really careful about that. So, you know, make sure you watch what you're doing and be very, very careful about that because you get a serious burn with that. So this is kind of the opposite effect where we're cooling the liquid down below its freezing point. And we know that matter is made of atoms, and so there's the, as the temperature goes down, what happens to the motion of the atoms? They slow down. And so in order for crystals to form for water, they have to reach 
a certain temperature. Now the normal freezing point for water is zero, and if you get this down to about eight degrees, minus eight, then you have your supercooling. That's the purpose of the digital thermometer. Now, I've done this enough times that you have to kind of be careful because if you leave them in there too long and you don't pay attention to how much rock salt you're adding and you don't keep a good track of the temperature, the bottles will actually burst inside the inside the pan that you have them in, which is, you know, it's made out of glass, so you don't want glass flying over, but the glass doesn't fly over. What happens is it just goes whoop, and then you see this huge geyser of water come out of your pan while you're talking about something else waiting for them to cool down. So you gotta kinda pay attention and make sure that, you know, you don't get it too cold. Because if it gets too cold, the, the uh, crystals will form anyway. You'll go below the super cooling point and you'll start to get the crystallization and it will fracture the glass. Now, uh, with the with the water bottles, I haven't tried it with the water bottles. Doing you know adding uh, you know adding seltzer water to a water bottle, taking plastic water bottles and try it. I've only used glass before, but I would think that it would probably work just as well with a plastic bottle as well. The only difference is is that you'd have to be very very careful when you remove it because any little kind of indentation or any kind of jiggling at all is going to start to super cool within the in the bottle. All right, and they're super cooling. Thank you.